everybody. I know you're probably parched, but good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cheryl Benton. I'm the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Public Affairs, and it is my great pleasure to have you here this afternoon and to welcome you to the State Department. You know, this is a tremendous turnout, and I know it was pretty hot outside. Even my daughter recommended that she was soaked all the way through. We also have with us Congressman Don Payne from the state, great state of New Jersey. Um, and we know, Don, please stand up and give him a round of applause. And finally, I want to thank Secretary P.J. Crowley. <laughs> Looks like a much less ornery audience than the one I just uh, was visiting with. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for being here, and welcome to the Department of State. Um, but uh, it's important that you're here because we recognize that the future of Africa is not just going to be dependent on uh, things that we do as a government and government-to-government -government activities. So much more of what is happening in Africa involves you know, people-to-people, businesses-to-businesses, uh, and so the solutions to Africa are as much in the private sector uh, and the NGO community as they are uh, in the public sector formally in terms of programs uh, here at the, uh, at the Department of State or throughout the United States. Uh, very direct diplomacy is our very first speaker, the enormously capable uh, Assistant Secretary for African Affairs, and my friend and colleague, Johnny Carson, will be begin our discussions this afternoon. To thank Cheryl Benton, who has put this program together. I also uh, would like to extend my warm welcome to Congressman Payne, the chairman of the House Subcommittee uh, on Africa and one of Africa's leading experts and leading supporters of the Department of State and our policies. Uh, welcome, Congressman Payne. Named um, Milan Verveer as ambassador at large for global women's issues to concentrate on the role that women can play in, uh, in organizing and helping to solve these many challenges. So uh, we're happy to have as our next speaker our ambassador at large for global women's issues, Milan Verveer. And there has indeed been progress, but there is also a long road to go. I would like to talk, touch briefly on some of the areas in which uh, we are working uh, to ensure that women can do uh, all that they need to do and be free and well and educated in order to do that in Africa. Uh, early next year. Uh, and uh, Tim, thank you very much for coming. PJ, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Um, and I appreciate all the words that uh, Ambassador Carson said earlier about Sudan and uh, uh, and PJ's introduction. What I'm going to do is focus on uh, being brief so that we can have a lot of uh, question and answer as much as we can. Thank you all for being here. And congratulations to the Bureau of Public Affairs for organizing uh, this opportunity for exchange of views. President Obama's new national security strategy makes clear, and previous speakers today have confirmed, that the diversity and the complexity of Africa present extraordinary challenges and extraordinary opportunities. We'll, we'll be here, and then we'll come over here. Thank you, sir. My name is Theophila Abega. I'm with the Civil Society. Um, during the pre previous presentations, I uh, kind of wondered, because I haven't heard anything said being said about um, Central Africa, um, you have programs, you, um, you have agendas and, you know, policies, policies that are being undertaken towards Africa, from south to north, west, but there's nothing being said about Central Africa, Cameroon, besides like Gabon that was mentioned, you know, but there's nothing being said about Cameroon, Congo, etc. Is there anything? I know you're with USA, but USA, as I understand, closed their doors in Cameroon some years ago. Is there anything, you know, um, in the agenda for Central Africa. Thank you. Well, uh, the way that uh, we have, you know, and I cannot uh, speak to particular countries, I can say that uh, we do have uh, the, the, uh, the map of Africa, the way our, our missions are organized. Uh, in a way that includes uh, these countries of Central Africa within the broader context 
of uh, West Africa. And uh, within West Africa, within these countries, we have, uh, we have a presence in, in very many of them. Uh, but uh, I cannot speak to, to individual countries, uh, Cameroon. I, I just I don't know the specifics of, of Cameroon. I do know that we have when when you when you look uh, look at the map here uh, uh, of Africa, and you look along the line here from uh, from Ghana to Nigeria uh, and into the Congo, that we have significant programs in these countries. But I can't break it down by by particular country. Thank you, sir. I'm from Cameroon. Ah, okay. <laughs> you can answer. <laughs> uh, it's just a follow-up quest, uh, question to what uh, Mr. Bega was saying. Since you don't know the uh, breakdown, US, uh, USAID had been for decades in Cameroon. And yes. Suddenly, about, I think about eight or ten years ago, it was closed down. Oh, I'm sorry. What is the Cameroon question? It was <laughs> a statement that, that said that uh, the future of the mission the it closed ten years ago. <laughs> I cannot say, but 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 I don't. I, I am unaware of plans to reopen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.